that we sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. May these words, as they are lifted from the holy and inspired written word of God, be a source of comfort and strength during your times of grief. May we bow together in prayer. God, we are so grateful that we can come to you in this time of extreme need, fully confident that you are able to supply our every need. We ask that you would visit Sister Piper's family now in a very special way. Embrace them and draw them close to your bosom so that they will feel the sweet solos that can only know you to be the God of all comfort, and you can touch places that no one else can touch, and do what no other power can do. So even now, lift them so that they will become consciously aware that even in the midst of their darkness and despair, there is a bright side somewhere. And we thank you for the light. Sister Patricia and young Piper, who was a beacon of light and a joy just to be in her presence. And we know that heaven has become even richer now because she has joined that choir that sings in the celestial hymns. Therefore, we praise you and give you glory. Jerusalem coming up from every 
choose my words very carefully. Because, you know, just because someone is of a female gender, does that does not make them a lady. But Sister Patricia Ann Young Piper was certainly a lady. I've heard it said, and I think that it's proper for us to apply it, that our loss is heaven's gain. The reason I wanted to preface that I've heard it said because I, I don't think that when we are Christians that we ought to use that terminology loss. You can't lose something when you, when you know where it is. And we know where Sister Piper is. And then that she's all right now. Just for the next short while, the Lord led me to the book of Revelation, chapter number seven, uh, the B clause of the 14th verse. Chapter number seven of the book of Revelation, the B clause of the 14th verse. And there these words are thus written in the love of the prophet language, language of the King James Version. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made it white in the blood of the Lamb. I want to talk about on the other side of three. On the other side of three. I'm sure that you recognize that the book of Revelation not only is the last book in the compilation known as the Bible, but it is classified as the uh, an apocalyptic book. And the term apocalyptic in the Greek means an uncovering or a revealing. And when you look at the book of Revelation, one thing that comes across quite, quite, quite clear, you all excuse me, I get tangled up with this mask on, but I'm going to keep it on. Can I get a witness? Amen. But one thing that comes across quite clearly that's revealed in the book of Revelation is that when you get on the Lord's side, you have already gotten on the wind side. You see, uh, it is it's, 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 it's quite uh, evident when you look at the various campaigns of struggles and, and contentions in the book of Revelation that God's side always comes out on the top. And, and, and that helps us to embrace that old cliche of the church where it says, serving the Lord will pay off every time. And I like that because it's not most of the time, not a lot of the time, not sometimes, but every time. When you get on the Lord's side, you don't have to worry about how it's going to turn out. You're going to be on the winning side. And I'm sure that... Uh, we are, uh, are confident that Sister Piper knew that. That's why that uh, she was such a church person that regardless of wherever she would go, she would align herself with the church and not only align herself, but become active in the church and use her gift and talent to give glory to the Lord because she was confident that her labor would not be in vain in the Lord. Now, uh, I, I like the thing when we look at the book of Revelation and, and we see how John has a conversation with his tour guide when he saw this number that no man could number. And, and then he was asked, well, who are they? And he said, I don't know, but you know. And he said, these are they, which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made it white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, you all excuse me, but I'm just country common and crazy. But whenever I look at, at the, the, that kind of language, I, I just celebrate because what it says is that, that God showed how he does what he does. And he could care less about what, what other folk opinion might be. He used red blood to make their robes white. And what that says to me, that didn't matter how much dirt was on the robe or how dingy it was, 
God wrote that thing so that the robe was white. Now, I, I know I might be talking to some folk who ain't never done nothing in their lives and never made any kind of mistakes, but if you're anything like me, you have done some stuff that put some dirt on your robe. But you ought to be celebrating and say with the hymn Jesus who said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we are grateful that we can come today and say that it doesn't matter what folk know about Sister Piper, what they think about Sister Piper, she done washed, washed her robe and his white because it was in the blood of the Lamb. You all excuse me for cutting across the field, but allow me to be brief as I look at this text and, and as we come to celebrate the life of Sister Patricia and Young Piper, one thing that comes across quite clearly is that there's no specific time frame for getting through what you go through. You know, uh, 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 sometimes some people go through for a long time, and sometimes some people don't go through anything at all. But one thing we know, that we put our trust in the Lord, he will see us through. He will get us through. And on the other side of through, there's a blessing already waiting for us. And then when I looked at this text, I also came to realize that there is no cookie cutter process to getting through. That's why I don't need anybody get upset because somebody else ain't going through what you're going through. But we got to understand that what we go through, that's for us to go through. But if we are just hold on to God while we're going through, we'll see that on the other side of truth, there is a blessing that's waiting for us. We know that Sister Piper had, 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 had it kind of rough at the end, but she did not allow it to make her bitter. She went through what she went through, trusting that the Lord was going to see her through. But then when we look at the text, it becomes a quite clear that if you just trust God and hold on to his unchanging hand, that he will uh, 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 get us through even though we can't see what we're going through and why we're going through what we're going through. But we got to know that even though we don't know what the future holds, if we believe in him who holds the future, that everything is going to be all right. I am confident that Sister Patricia Ann Young Piper said, I've been walking with the Lord for too long to turn around now. It may get rough, it may get hard, it may become extremely difficult, but he has brought me too far for me to turn around now. And I'm gonna hold on until my change comes. And, and the other day, her change came. God gave her healing that earthly doctors couldn't provide. He showed that he's able uh, to do all things well. And he provided for her as only he could do. And I'm here to report, and I'm sure that if you walk her by faith, you believe it yourself that she's all right now because she is going on to that land where there's no more sickness, no more sadness, no more suffering, no more pain, but everything is all right because she has washed her robe and made it white in the blood of the Lamb. Sleep on, Sister Patricia and Young Piper. Take your rest. The choir has a, a unique sound now that's going to be blurted out every now and then. But we are going to look forward to hearing that choir sing again and see that stellar voice of Sister Piper singing along with those in the celestial heights. Family, lean on the Lord and, and know that if you, if you keep your hand in God's unchanging hand except Jesus as your personal Savior, this is not goodbye. This is just good evening. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep on. Sleep on. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. When we bow together, God, in the sweet name of Jesus, we thank you for the victory. We pray to God for how we can come with the certainty of knowing 